Hello and welcome to Eat Show presents the RCB podcast. So they rang the rang the bell and yeah. left it outside the room. Uh, it's a box. Yeah, uh, it was a yeah, it was a box, and uh, I opened it. I <laughs> took the jersey out and. Uh, Um, yeah, I wore it. I I took a picture in it. My wife was with me. How how does it work? So do they ask you what number you want at your back? Yeah. Does somebody actually ask you that question? Yeah, they ask you your uh, size, your uh, jersey number, your uh, name. So uh, somebody texts you all these things. Yeah, yeah. They send you an Excel sheet. <laughs> oh, do they do? Do they? Yeah. Oh, okay, great. So even cricketers need to know Excel yeah. then. It's yeah. the worst horrible <laughs> software on planet Earth. Yeah. Okay. It is. I agree. So you uh, fill in the details. Send you it to fill them. in the details. You send it to them. The jersey comes to you, and yeah, the first time I wore it, uh, I, I had flashbacks of everything that I've been through, and uh, and uh, there was a there was a proud moment. Welcome to the RCB podcast. My name is Danish, and uh, we're discussing game-changing moments. Now, these could be about the career or about personal life. And with me is my friend and uh, RCB uh, Maverick Harshal Patel. Hello, and welcome back to the RCB podcast. What does it feel like to be a guest for the second time? It feels great. So you've had quite an incredible year. Um, after those wickets. when the team retained players and when you were sent back into the auction did you ever think uh, you'd get picked for the prize that you went for in these auctions no no absolutely not i mean a uh, lot of people asked me what your expectations were uh, after the auction and i said uh, i was expecting probably 6 or 7 crores yeah uh, because uh, i had uh, looked at uh, people in in my category in past 3 or 4 seasons and they none of them actually made more money than that in the big auction so i thought okay uh, i can i can safely expect to make 5 6 7 crores okay. but uh, safely yeah yeah uh, without uh, hurting my my myself too much yeah uh, but yeah i mean lot of people around me told me that it could go into double figures uh, and i just didn't believe them because i'm a cautious optimist <laughs> right yeah so uh so yeah when that happened it was uh, it was a pleasant uh, shock <laughs> and i i still remember srh and uh, rcb were going neck to neck and um, uh, it went over 10 crores and uh, there was there was a lot of conversations going on between bids and uh, i really wanted to come back and play for rcb so i thought i thought to myself okay it's enough i mean i don't want one more bid i'm okay with the money i've got I just wanted to finish, and I want to. I want to go back to RCB. Because I remember texting you, or actually calling you right at the back of that, and saying, "Dude, congrats! This is life changing." Mad. Yeah. I hung up, and then for some reason, I thought to myself, "This is a friend of mine who doesn't really need money to change his life because his life is already great." Yeah. Uh, this is probably bank account changing, career changing. Yeah. But what does it really mean to you? I mean, what does this money actually mean to you? yeah like i've said before i mean it gives me choices freedom. uh freedom right yeah. it gives me choices so uh if i if i continue to play at this price even if i don't continue to play at this price i don't really think i need to base any of my life decisions on uh, how much money am i getting uh yeah. anymore uh yeah. because uh, uh like i've said before i'm not i'm not an extravagant person uh i don't really need a lot of money yeah. uh, but uh, but money is a tool to freedom so so that's how i look at it and uh, and yeah it gives me it still gives me a lot of choices and even in the future when i'm done playing cricket uh, whatever decisions i make after that i will not have to base them on uh, how much money i'm getting from this job you know so much of life is about moments right and uh, what is that one moment where you did something like did like a sequence followed by another sequence and went 
man i'm ready for the next level yeah. was there a day like that or a match like that that you remember yeah i think that that first uh, uh, affirmation that you know i can i can play at this level was uh, was not in ipl but in uh, ranji trophy uh, because i had just moved from uh, gujarat to haryana mm-hmm. and uh, i had played five ranji trophy games i had eight nine wickets in five games so nothing really uh, significant and then uh, we ended up qualifying uh, and the the great uh, story about that game was we were playing a last league game and the equation were uh, were placed in 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 such a way that if we lose a game we could relegate to the lower uh, uh, plate level and if we win the game we could actually qualify into the quarter finals oh wow that's high stakes that was that's very high, high stakes. stakes yeah and uh, win all or lose all yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, i remember we ended up uh, conceding the first the first inning lead so if that game had no result we would have lost that game yeah and then we come back and play out of our skin and uh, end up winning the game and then we ended up qualifying for uh, the quarter finals and uh, the quarter finals we were playing at chinna swami against uh, karnataka uh, my first ever ranji trophy season and uh, i ended up picking eight uh, eight wicket all uh, against karnataka that 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 was the first time i felt that uh, you know i can i can play at this level because uh, when we were young ranji trophy was so uh, blown out of proportion that it is a impossibly difficult level to play at yeah that's what that's what everyone told us when we were playing junior cricket like whatever you do in junior cricket doesn't really matter because that level is just unbelievably out of your reach yeah uh, and i grew up believing that uh, and then to come into my my first ranji trophy season and picking picking up eight wicket haul consecutive eight wicket hauls in quarter and semi final was the first time i actually felt that okay i can i can uh, play at this level and do well for for me the 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 important part is uh, recognizing what is enough for you mm uh, because people will always keep saying because i also grew up around people who never allowed me to celebrate uh, i'm i'm talking about coaches and other people who never allowed me to celebrate my successes at that level but they, the, they is, is that good to, that's very bad yeah it's so bad because i remember uh, uh, winning the under 19 championship for gujarat uh, in one days and in uh, longer yeah. format uh, in in the same year yeah and uh, my coach uh, said to me that okay we'll celebrate when you get picked for the indian team for india under 19 team <laughs> just what a uh, buzz kill it, yeah and, and <laughs> it continues a... it continues it goes on uh, when i was picked for the under 19 uh, indian team to play the world cup we said okay when you win the world cup we'll celebrate oh god uh, <laughs> <laughs> so so it was uh, it was this perpetual uh, hamster wheel that uh, that i was in and uh, it was never <laughs> it was never about okay you know you've achieved something great yeah. uh, let's all go out celebrate have a nice uh, meal together and all that it was always about the destination not about the journey right. and uh, that again uh, played a huge role in in uh, in the way i uh, looked at that under 19 world cup opportunity mm-hmm. and never enjoyed it uh, uh, i was always under pressure of of my own expectations of expectations that people had uh, thrown on to me they kept saying do well do well do well you have to do well you have to do well i mean these things are life changing right yeah Yeah. they all to you as a human being yeah. all together it did and i i'm i'm so glad that it happened to me because i i wouldn't have it any other way the person i am the mindset i have today is because of those uh, those incidents that happened hmm. um otherwise i would not have realized that that is a wrong way to look at life how how can you tell a 19 year old who has achieved something great to not celebrate and look forward to the next thing that he may or may not achieve Uh, also i think for a 19 year old whether he achieve something great or not yeah. irrespective yeah. then him celebrate yeah he's 19 yeah. he's supposed to celebrate yeah. yeah 
and celebration for us was uh, like going out for a meal sandwich <laughs> sandwiches yeah that was uh, that was celebration for us Jai. having happy fees happy fees <laughs> and uh, uh, having sandwiches or going out for unlimited pizza but so so how does that impact you today i mean like we're talking about life changing moments right so how does it change you today today um, do you celebrate every win every wicket a lot harder than you would have probably when you were 19 or 20 yeah absolutely i mean a lot of the way i celebrate on the field i very rarely celebrate uh, with with a lot of enthusiasm and all that because that's the person i am because i it's very hard for me to get out of the tunnel vision and actually celebrate in the game yeah. uh, so i don't but uh, the moment i come back uh, from the ground or the moment the game is finished if i've done well i will celebrate uh, no matter what um, and and those are the experiences that actually taught me that it's it's in the moment and the other thing is you define your success yeah you define when you've done well and you define when you've not done well yeah because if you go by other people's standards Oof. you never meet them man you you never meet them you you will always disappoint them and you will always disappoint yourself Same. so i have my own standards even even if 15 people tell me that i bowl really well and i am not happy with it i am not happy with it even if 15 people tell me i have not bowled well and I, and i am happy with it i am absolutely happy and content with it so so those were the experiences that actually taught me to to think this way everything everything for me is internal my drive is internal my uh uh my definition of success is internal uh everything that i do comes from comes from within it doesn't come from anyone else this ipl season right um it's been like extremes for you especially on the personal front uh you've had uh, a loss that's irreplaceable and you've had a new member walk into your life which again is irreplaceable he he must be quite sort of personally must be like going through a lot man yeah i mean when when my sister passed uh i was i was in grief uh yeah. for uh, she passed on 9th of april and uh, i was in grief for a week and uh, and you were alone you I went was, to ahmedabad came back i was in yeah. quarantine i was uh, i was talking to my niece and nephew and everyone back home and uh, you know i can't go and hug them and cry with them but we were doing it on the phone uh, because that was the only option available uh, and then 7 uh, days later uh, my son is born uh, yeah. so, <laughs> so so i i kind of went numb for uh, for a week in days i didn't really know what i was feeling whether i should be happy whether i should be sad uh, it would all you know come come in waves um, there were times where i probably cried three four times in my room uh, yeah. every day um, and then at times you would you would see i would see my son uh, on uh, on facetime and uh, and be just extremely joyful and uh, yeah. happy and uh, and all that and when you have those polar emotions uh, pulling at you constantly uh, it can be quite draining so like i said i was numb for 10 days what do you think those that one week has done to you as a person have you been able to process what it's done to you in a week yeah i mean has it made you wiser has it made you uh, more stoic as a as a personality what has it done to you for me how how an idea becomes a belief is you you come up with something that you feel is worth pursuing and then you practice it practice it practice it practice it until it becomes second nature to you so for me i keep saying that i want to be in equilibrium uh, whether something good happens something bad happens i want to be stable more or less mm. uh, so that was those those two weeks were a great opportunity for me uh, to to actually practice that uh, and and see how well i can deal with that uh, and and i didn't take it as a challenge but it was 
it was just a way for me to know whether I can actually practice this, uh, practice and attain this high ideal of being in equilibrium. Um, so I, I tried to do that. I uh, tried to console my family in the best possible way and uh, they tried to console me in the best possible way. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, uh, got through it. When you're bowling six balls, you're literally crafting something new every single time. How do you do this? I mean, it's almost like you're improvising on the go, right? Like, I think bowlers are improvisers. Yeah. Uh, is it easy to do it when you're under the pump or when you're under pressure? Yeah, it's not easy to do it. But like everything else, uh, practice is what actually makes you better at that. Yeah. And uh, for me, I'm a big believer in... Um, off the field preparations yeah so you you sort of need to have a lot of uh, calculations in the back of your mind so if i have a plan of bowling slowers and yorkers in the death overs and for some reason i couldn't execute those i need to have a plan b ready in my head in the back of my mind so that in the heat of the moment in that pressure situation i don't have to make a lot of decisions i don't have to do a lot of calculations in my head yeah uh uh, when you have that in the back of your head, it sort of uh, quickly comes into four, uh, comes to four when uh, when you're under pressure that, okay, my Yorkers are not working today. Yeah. So what do I do next? What do I fall back on to? Mm -hmm. How do I get this better off strike? So it's a, it's a mix of uh, preparations, off the field preparations and, uh, uh, and your uh, skill practice uh, that, uh, that allows you to adapt to any situation that you're thrown into. Mm. Um, so, and, and it doesn't, it doesn't happen overnight. So it's rehearsals, years and years and years, years. and years of rehearsals, constant, uh, tweaking and, uh, you know, every, after every game, me and Griff, uh, sit together and, uh, review what I've done, uh, whether I've been able to execute what I wanted to execute, whether my plans were good, whether my thought process was uh, sound by doing that constantly game after game after game, you sort of find ways to refine it. Yeah, and I've come to a place in 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 my own bowling where uh, where uh, I know a lot of scenarios uh, in the back of my head. What are we, what numbers are we talking about? Uh, like how many scenarios are we talking about? If you had to put a number to it, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How many scenarios are we talking about? I think you can't go more than three or four because uh, that's what your skill set allows you to do. That's it. Just four. Yeah, just three or four. There are only four types of deliveries that I can bowl. Uh, so, so for me, the challenge is how you package it. Uh, for any bowler, the challenge is how you package it. No, so so you're saying that when you when you pick up four deliveries that you have, you're saying that the guy batting also has only four ways to play. Yeah, he he has uh, like you can play 15, yeah. 15 shots in uh, in a game of cricket. You can't play all of them at once, and you yeah. not everyone can play fifteen shots equally well. Yeah, so it's your uh, it's your normal defense that you uh, tap the ball around for singles. Yeah. One one is your uh, pull shot, your six hitting uh, lofted shot, your cut, your sweep. So four deliveries for four shots is sounds sounds about okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. so you need to have uh, different uh, packaging options, as in if if I am trying to bowl a Yorker and uh, it's not it's not working, what is my next option? So if uh, if I'm bowling to a longer leg side. I could bowl slower balls into the pitch or hard length into the pitch yeah. and make him hit uh, to the longer side. And then I have to also take into account what the batsman's strengths are, uh, what the wicket is playing. Yeah. And and all those calculations uh, come together and uh, sort of all, all these calculations actually happen off the field. Oh, and so once you come onto the field, uh, it it's all if not A, B, B, if not B, C, if yeah. not C, D. Uh, I mean, you sound like a computer right now to me. Yeah, yeah. Those calculations happen. Uh, <laughs> I, th I thought my childhood was done with small wonder. <laughs> Back at it again. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but it happens uh, very fairly effortlessly yeah. because uh, because you've been doing it for uh, for such a long time and like I like I said before the preparation before the game, you have all these scenarios in the back of your head. So you're like a lock pad on a suitcase. Yeah. 
there are four numbers you got to yeah, get the combination, the combination and one of them will unlock yeah you have your combination set yeah. so you either going to use one two three or four uh, you can't really have more than that you can't wow. really have uh, 15 plans that's quite awesome so tell me if you have to root all of this back when did you become this guy what is that moment where you became this guy who had like four plans in your head when did you realize that yeah so i i learned this from zaheer khan in in my first uh, ever season with rcb and in ipl uh, so he basically taught me that there are four kinds of deliveries here length wall bouncer or yorker yeah. and how you package that will determine determine uh, your success and obviously execution plays a big part but uh, so so i always had uh, had that at the base Uh, but like i said i kept practicing it i kept practicing it trial and error over uh, last 10 11 years and uh, now i've sort of realized that uh, there are there are certain options that work better for me there are certain options that don't work better uh, yeah. well for me so uh, if i'm absolutely out of options then i'll choose uh, the options which are low percentage for me mm. um so everyone everyone in ipl or even in industrial cricket now knows what i bowl and how i bowl yeah. but uh, but the trick is uh, how how i read the game how i read what they're trying to do and try and uh, stay one step ahead of them you've had quite a journey uh, uh 10 years at base prize and then you explode onto the scene and uh, suddenly everybody is like purple patel we looked up your fan clubs yesterday <laughs> this, this came out empty <laughs> no, we found four groups each group had one guy <laughs> so you now have four fans but these four guys are looking at you do you think it's only four guys looking at you or you think it's more than that how many eyeballs and has this been life changing yeah i don't really know i i mean i do have a lot of support uh, whenever i post something or whenever they're talking about me a lot of it has been positive yeah so i do feel that uh, people like what i do but uh, <laughs> no, they do of course they do <laughs> are you talking about the, the stuff you do on social media or the stuff you do on the cricket field the both of, i mean both of it i mean i don't do anything different on social media no, you're a good you're a good actor <laughs> see the ads you do yeah. so you say yeah <laughs> So yeah I think I do have that uh, little bit of support and uh, I don't like this word fan I it's become such a corrosive and uh, uh, like <laughs> you are you're for there's nothing to be worried about <laughs> don't worry yeah, it's become such a uh, corrosive uh, thing that people are constantly abusing each other for being somebody else's fan and it's just mad uh, mad to see that I I find the love very enduring. I find it extremely enduring at the same time I find it kind of scary that it's very scary. Right? Honestly, it's very scary. I mean love and hate are a very uh, <laughs> very, very extreme scary, words but they they have a very blurry line in uh, in between them. Yeah. Like it could turn into love could turn into hate and hate could turn into love very easily. And I think both somewhere till to rage yeah yeah extreme yeah. love is rage extreme hate is rage is. somewhere kind of turns extreme of everything is bad yeah. uh, i feel uh, so as good as love is uh, extreme of it can be very toxic and same with hate and same with everything i think where does all this come from i mean it's uh, it clearly years of wisdom and years of sort of roughing it out uh and uh, without doing that nobody really gets to this level of awareness and you're a very self aware person i know uh i can guarantee that uh where does it come from i mean it comes from uh, it comes from lot of uh introspection i feel uh honest introspection because if you're not if you're not in your introspections if you're not honest to yourself then then it's a it's a fool's errand uh uh if you're constantly trying to find reasons outside of yourself of why you're not happy or why you're not successful or why you failed at that uh then then you're not moving in the right direction so for me is the the ideal 
person that I want to become. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and whatever roadblocks I face in in that journey, I want to slowly try and get rid of them as as best as I can. And uh, just at the end of the day, be be honest with myself. Um, and and be open to change, be willing to be wrong about about your beliefs. Uh, mm-hmm. Not not be married to an idea or to ideology. Yeah. Uh, because because if you the moment something becomes your identity, uh, you're uh, you're you're in trouble. I want like I like I said before. I want everything to be internal, not external. Uh, so. Whatever the the stoic principles are, I'm I'm not saying I'm a stoic or this or that or uh, none of that. I I don't want to put myself in any brackets or uh, uh, anything like that. But I just don't want to be affected by things that are happening outside of my control and outside of my consciousness. And all all these things of you know trying to lend your hand and uh, just be a good calming presence. Um, uh, when when things are going wrong, uh, I mean, I want to be the person when things are going wrong. People can people can lean on me, like rely on you. You want to be reliable, 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 consistent, uh, uh, and and yeah, there's there's nothing really much to it for me. It's it's as simple as that. I I want to be consistent in my thought processes and my behavior and and. And yeah, whatever time I have on on this earth. Uh, when you played for India, did anything change at all in you, or by then you were like cool? I mean, I I'm happy. Yeah, nothing much really. Uh, um, you you can be honest because yeah, I'm I'm being very honest. It was the blue jersey. Usually, you see it on TV or in a film, yeah. and people are feeling it. And yeah. did you do all of that? No, I felt very proud when I got that jersey. Okay. Uh, I I felt very proud of. Uh, so they rang the rang the bell and yeah. left it outside the room. Uh, it's a box. Yeah, it was a, yeah, it was a box. And uh, I opened it. I took the jersey out and, uh, um, yeah, I wore it. I I took a picture in it. My wife was with me. How how does it work? So do they ask you what number you want at your back? Yeah. Does somebody actually ask you that question? Yeah, they ask you your uh, size, your uh, jersey number, your uh, name. So somebody texts you all these things. Yeah, yeah. They send you an Excel sheet. <laughs> oh, do they? Do, do they? Yeah. Oh, okay, great. So even cricketers need to know Excel yeah, then. It's yeah. the worst horrible <laughs> software on planet Earth. Yeah. Okay. It is. I agree. So you uh, fill in the details. Send you it to fill them. in the details. You send it to them. The jersey comes to you, and yeah, the first time I wore it, uh, I, I had flashbacks of everything that I've been through, and. Uh, and uh, there was a proud moment, but uh, is is it that when you're actually at your bowling mark and you're thinking, okay, I want to go and bowl to this guy, and people are screaming, India, India. What is that feeling like? Because not everybody is going to get to experience it. Yeah, yeah. For me, I'll be very honest. I have I have very uh, narrow tunnel vision when I'm when I'm on the field, so I don't really know what's happening around me. Uh, I I do have that peripheral. Uh, understanding of, of what's happening mm. but i'm so engrossed in uh, in what i what i'm going to do and in the game that i don't really hear i i don't really hear the noise at times wow when i'm bowling and i don't really know how that happens but it happens i can't really hear anything uh, when i'm running into bowl or when i'm walking back after bowling the the only thing going on in my mind is okay what am i doing now wow so when the MC is screaming, when I say Harshal, you say Patel, you don't care. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, it's not that I don't care, but uh, it, it's not in my it's not in my immediate uh, uh, point of view. Hershey, is there a book or uh, a video that you watched that has moved you and stays with you? Yeah, uh, Carl Sagan's uh, Pale Blue Dot is is still. Especially the first chapter, uh, before going very technical, he talks about um, how how humans have evolved into what we have evolved into, and um, uh, the role of astronomy in it, and uh, how how insignificant we are in the cosmic uh, scheme of things. Sure. Um, so, so that is one book. the The second book is uh, uh, it was 
would have been an impossible book to read but i was lucky enough with the audio books i could get uh, william sharer's um, uh, the rise and fall of the third reich which is um, the entire chronology of how hitler uh, came into power and uh, leading up to the world war 2 and the end of it and how it all ended uh, so the third reich was hitler's reign in uh, germany and the rise and fall of that it's a uh, it's i think 65 hour uh, audio book uh one of one of the most profound uh, pieces of uh, history uh, ever written and uh, that taught me a lot about uh, good and evil and uh, how how it can all change in a matter of seconds uh, in a matter of days uh, if you are not careful and uh, how propaganda works and and all these things Uh, and one book that i'm reading right now which i'm absolutely in love with is uh, the beginning of infinity by david deutsch um uh, so it uh, talks about enlightenment era and uh, how how scientific uh, revolution came about and uh, what is what is about uh, a theory that makes it a good explanation or a bad explanation mm. and how do you differentiate between them the the genre of epistemology which is how do you, how do we acquire knowledge um and and all of that so it's a fascinating book um, it's a difficult read for sure and some of these books can be a handful yeah but uh, it's not a book that you read to finish it's a book that, that you, you read, read to understand <laughs> yeah you read and you ponder so so yeah these uh, these few books have had a big impact So we're talking about like moments that have changed your life and I think there've been so many moments. As a friend I feel really happy for you and if you had to personally pick one favorite moment uh what would that moment be? Yeah, uh something that was so traumatic to me uh was uh, 2018 auction. Um and I think that 2018 auction was a catalyst of change uh and that was a that was a beginning of the process that made me the player and the person i am today so for me that that auction was uh was a it's probably one of the most pivotal moments in my life uh, uh and uh, and a lot of things changed after that for uh, for good 